to actually finally you know introduce this vlog um i have been filming little clips all day but it's actually 5 p.m now <laughs> and i wanted to do this vlog it's a little bit different from what i normally do and my inspiration was chloe from books with chloe i first of all love her videos love her channel if you somehow are not subscribed to her um it's gonna be linked down below i love her so much <laughs> And she makes videos like this quite often that are a little bit shorter and just feel so peaceful. And she called this one the last one, uh, like romanticizing her life. And I do want to do, like, I think I want to do this again and romanticize it a little bit more. <laughs> but today I just wanted to have a peaceful day. Today is like the end of my days off. And so I just wanted to rejuvenate before working this weekend and, you know, gather up some strength and also just slow down. <laughs> I literally, I kind of mentioned this, you know, in my like 24 hour readathon and some of the other reading vlogs that I did that like I really need to chill out about how many books I read in my vlogs. But I want to start doing more vlogs like this that's like day in my life or um it's just like reading one book and things like that because like while it's not the only thing that i want to do i don't think that i want every single one of my vlogs to be you know reading six books or ten books like <laughs> that is not healthy you know and like i still read books that i love i don't read books for the amount but i should just slow down sometimes and that's what we're going to do today and that's what I've been trying to do since this morning. So I actually had quite a nice morning. I talked to my um, roommate, Bestie, and that was very nice. And um, made some lunch and whatever. That didn't work out that well. And then I did have a bit of a stressful moment because I was getting my nails done. And I was leaving for the appointment. And I was like kind of running late a little bit, like five minutes. But... I am not someone who's ever late, you know, my anxiety doesn't let me, I <laughs> just, I can't do it, you know, but I was late today because I was just like all over the place, but then I got my nails done, um, so this is what they look like, I am filming this on my phone, so is that gonna focus on it? Probably not, let's see, is that in focus? I think it's still not in focus, yeah, I don't think that's gonna focus on my nails, um, but I wanted to film on my phone today. For that, like, you know, like, vulnerable, <laughs> um, chill feeling where, like, my camera, I have to worry a little bit about it running out of battery and whatever, you know? So I'm just like, you know what? We're gonna film on my phone. So, yeah, this is what they look like, unfocused. Um, and I changed to this top because I already did my, like, my eyeshadow light p purple and the, the, the nails are obviously light purple and sparkly and... <laughs> I can't resist um, the sparkles because, um, like, 
Um, I love sparkly things. I love glitter and I really like these and I love light purple. Like pink and purple are my favorite colors ever if that wasn't like obvious. Yeah, so that was very nice. I did get them a little bit too short for me, but then I was like, you know what? I <laughs> I think it's actually for the best. One reason, one thing that I thought about is writing on this keyboard. I don't just want to read today. We're going to talk about, you know, the book that I'm reading and everything. You you would have already seen it in my clips. I went to the bookstore as well after getting my nails done. And I thought about this keyboard, which the keys are like quite high up and so when I type on this with my very long nails it's not the most comfortable experience and so it's like you know what that's actually so much better for this and I have been wanting to use it a little bit more recently I do really love it a lot I do want to get a new keyboard when that's possible that has more of like I think it's called creamy sound because I just like I, that is just so satisfying and it motivates me so much to write <laughs> Um, cause this one, the sound is not fully there. Like, there's like a little bit, I don't know what to call it. I would say like after sound. I don't think it's a word, but you know, aftertaste, after sound. And it's not very satisfying, so I usually actually listen to music when I type on this. But I think we're gonna write on this a little bit later. Um, and we're gonna read, we're gonna watch things and have just a very peaceful day or evening now. But I go to bed very, I go to bed very late. And it also gets dark at 9 p.m. here now, which I absolutely love. Like, <laughs> I, the weather has been still absolutely horrible, honestly. Uh, I did have, like, 30 minutes of sunshine today, though, and I walked home. I have not done that in a while, and unfortunately, as they say, it is beneficial for, you know, my mental health. And <laughs> so I did that, and um, I do actually feel quite peaceful now. And we're just going to keep that going. So, the main book that's going to keep it going today is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. When I thought of doing this video today, I was just like, oh my gosh, there is no book that I would rather talk about right now than this. It is, if I only read this today, even if I don't finish it, then like this vlog is already going to be so good because of this. And so I am on page um, 190, so pretty much halfway through. And I mentioned this in my Magical Readathon vlog. I just realized also I got bubble tea and the straw was in the view the whole time. It does not look very appetizing because um, their machine wasn't working so it doesn't have the top and it just looks very light. It looks just as white as I am. So, you know, it could be a little bit stronger but it's not bad. <sighs> This is one of my most anticipated releases of the year based on how much I loved Part of Your World and um, Yours Truly. And I already knew that a lot of people also loved these books and then they've been absolutely loving this. Like, it already has, I think, like almost 50,000 ratings on Goodreads when it came out in April. Like, that is incredible. And I'm so happy because I love this book. I love Abby Jimenez. I wanted to get all the love in the world. And I said it in that vlog, this is my favorite. You know, like, I love these books with all my heart. Like, they're some of my all-time favorites, and so it's like choosing between children. But, like, this is my favorite. Um, I haven't finished it, but the way that the second that I started it, I was just like, this is perfection. And re every single page is just everything that I could ask for and more. And, like, it's so deeply charming. It's emotional. It, like has made me sad and emotional and it made me laugh and it is the perfect blend of like romance emotions there's amazing friendships and you know like their personal like inner journeys <laughs> and the connection between them incredible and like holy shit so let's talk about the plot in case you haven't heard anyone talk about it yet um we have justin and emma and they have both had a curse that everyone they date ends up, um, you know, breaking up with them or they break up with them and uh, they go on to find the one. They go on to find the person that they're going to marry, that they're going to spend their whole lives with. And um, on top of that, like these relationships, like it doesn't really break their heart because these relationships never really feel like they're going to go anywhere. They just feel 
kind of like fine. Justin posts on Reddit about it and just like a little bit of a story and Emma sees that and she messages him and she's like, oh my god, I literally have the same thing. They end up setting up this arrangement that they're gonna date, uh, they're gonna go on like four dates and date for a month to just for the summer, you know, uh, so that they can then break up and maybe go on to um, find the one. <laughs> and of course, it's gonna be each other. And oh my god, like they at first obviously start texting, which I adore texting in books more than anything. Like I love it so much. Or any kind of like mixed media thing where it's like calls, letters, whatever. I love it. And so that already felt so special from the start. And then when they start hanging out in person, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like they are perfect for each other on such a deep level. Like they're soul, they're literally soulmates. It just feels so beautiful. It's so soothing and comforting and lovely and filled with joy. And it does deal with some difficult things, but in a way that just feels like it's just going to be okay you know and so it is absolute perfection and so i read a little bit more at the bookstore today i again do not want to put pressure on myself to finish this today just because i'm doing this vlog it is about you know being calm <laughs> not freaking out not feeling all the anxiety that i feel every day you know and just see where it takes me because there is a high chance that I pick it up and I can't stop, but I also never want it to end, so we will see. I think that I won't read immediately. I want to film, I think, a May TBR. Um, I have something to watch and I'm getting really excited about it and a part of me thinks, okay, well, I like watching movies when it's dark outside, but in that case, I would have to wait till after 9 p.m. And I'm not sure if I want to do that because it's not that late. And the movie that I want to watch <laughs> is The Idea of You and I'm like super excited and I feel so good because I just generally recently, I'm not excited for almost any movies. I don't think there's enough coming out and when there is something coming out, it just feels fine. Like I talked about this in the other vlog uh, in my last one where I watched The Challengers and I'm not going to talk about it much in here but let's just say i loved that one so much and it finally made me feel something and i think the idea of you <laughs> i don't know what to expect but i think it's certainly gonna make me feel something and i don't know if it's like a classic romance from what i've heard it's not and so i'm a little bit scared about like how it's all you know like the ending and stuff i'm obviously not gonna mention that because i'm not gonna spoil it but i'm just gonna go into it you know wanting to have a fun time and I love Anne Hathaway, of course, and Nicholas Galitzin. Is that how you say it? Um, he's great as well. I think it's just going to be very entertaining, and I am super excited for that. So that's what we're going to watch as well. And maybe something else. The last thing I actually want to mention is that this morning I picked up The Mountain Is You by Brianna Weist, or Weist, I'm not sure how to pronounce the last name, but... I have had this for ages at this point, and this is like a nonfiction, like self-help-ish type of a book, and the little line here is transforming self-sabotage into self-mastery, and <laughs> um, I actually think that, that that like the first time I heard about it was from Chloe, so it felt fitting to pick it up today, and again, I just wanted to read something peaceful or like just something a little bit that's just not normal fiction. Like, And so this caught my eye and I did read, I don't know, maybe like 20 pages or something. And it is not a book that, first of all, I want to like um, read in one sitting or like even like just in a short amount of time. Um, it feels a little bit repetitive and some of it does feel basic, but then there's lines that actually feel really meaningful. And so I do want to read it, but I think just again, I want to take it slow and see when I'm in the mood for it. Uh, it's not completely everything that I could ask for, but it is good for what it is. Um, and I was thinking I would really love to read some poetry today, but I have had the worst poetry crisis the past like year, honestly. Because my favorite poet um, is Nikita Gill, and I have three of her collections that I have read. And is this all? Yeah, I think that's, well, that's all that I have here. And that is Where Hope Comes From, um, Your Soul is a River, and These Are the Words. And she's my favorite poet, 
and I love these so much and I do think and what I'm going to end up doing is just reread one of them or just at least read some of it. I think maybe where the hope comes from um because yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one. I'll think about that. But I need new poets so bad. Like, I mean, I discovered Nikita Gill years ago at this point. I've read many, many poetry collections since. And no one, there's no one I have loved as much as her poetry. But I just need a good poetry collection, you know? And I just don't know where to find recommendations. I don't know anyone who, like, recommends it on a regular basis. I've been trying to keep up with new releases, but... I just feel so un uninspired in it and I just want to find more. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know, especially if it's just anything that is in the direction of Nikita Gill. And so that's that. And I don't know, I might just end up, you know, running into some random audiobook or ebook as well. I think I might watch a little bit of YouTube and... Um, see where the day takes me. So I hope you enjoy the ride <laughs> and I hope this brings a little bit of comfort and peace into your day and so yeah. <laughs> So it's a while later and it's time for some updates. Ignore my hair, it's still a little bit wet. Um, but yeah, I feel like the chair looks so ugly like that in the background. Like, I am so happy that I bought it, but I feel like on camera the color looks even worse than it is in person. In person it's just kind of like a normal light green, but on camera it looks more like puke green, you know? Not the best. But I, <laughs> it's comfortable, it was cheap, I am very happy to have like a normal chair like that, which I did not previously, and I love having it back there next to the bookshelves. And I will buy like some blankets or some kind of covers for it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> let's talk about things. So, uh, I will actually talk about the idea of you first. So, I ended up watching that quite soon after talking to you because I was just like, you know what? I'm really excited for this. <laughs> I don't want to wait till, you know, later in the day. I just want to go watch it. And I do not. I have a thing. Again, I love movies. I'm actually like really passionate about them. I've only been very discouraged again because I feel like there's just not enough creative, amazing movies coming out that I'm super excited to watch a movie at home. Because if it is not at the cinema, then my like motivation drops because I love going to the cinema so like that can motivate me even if the film is mediocre but if it's at home it takes a lot to keep my attention at home and <laughs> I I think I liked it I think I actually liked it quite a lot like um you have to suspend like all the disbelief in your body like it's obviously a like the plot is unhinged it's like a little bit you know um but we all did not go into this movie for the plot. The plot is obviously Anne Hathaway and Nicholas Gelatine or whatever. And <laughs> I, like, I just, you know, I was just, it was just, it was just, it was a fun, it was fun. It was fun. They are amazing. I have always loved Anne Hathaway. I have loved her since I was like 10 or something. I don't know. Um, I, you know, I watched Ella Enchanted as a kid, Princess Diaries, of course, like, I grew up with that, and I'm so happy that she's been making so many movies ever since then that I can watch, and I just saw a tweet about, like, her in Ocean's 8, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I actually love that movie, and I have not rewatched it, like, in ages, and I've been wanting to do that for so long. And I've actually never watched all of those, but I did love this one. Like, all the women in this, like, just absolute slay. It was just such a fun time. And, like, you know, all the fashion and stuff, it's just so, like, entertaining and everything. So I think I'm gonna watch that soon. Um, as for Nicholas Galaxy, like, I think he's a great actor, I think. Like, obviously, I've seen, like, most of the movies he's been in recently, and, like, he does a great job. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm ge generally, like, a giant stan of him. I also thought that I didn't think 
that he's that hot. Um, but you know what? <laughs> I'm generally not really into blondes as like a general type thing. Obviously, it depends, you know. Um, but you know what? He has brown hair in this one. And he is just super charming, okay? Like, he is super charming. And like, the combination of the two actors is not something I would ever think of. It kind of feels a little, little bit strange. That's like two completely different un universes colliding, you know? Because they've just been in such different parts of the movie industry, like, in my eyes. Um, so it's, like, a little bit weird, but I think it works. I think it works because they both have so much charisma. They're both just so, like, just beautiful and, you know. <laughs> and it was just a great time. I That's all I'm going to say. So let's talk about books. I got to page 217. I've been having a crisis a little bit. Um, Because what time is it? It is... It's 10.30 p.m. I just called my mom uh, for like an hour and I watched the movie and I did a little bit of reading and so I haven't like read that much and a part of me is like I want to leave it there because I hate the thought of this being over. I can't handle it. I actually really like the thought of having this book to read tomorrow when I come home from work and you know have that to look forward to and so I'm, I think I just I want to force myself not to finish it today. But every part of me is screaming at me to read more. But I'm scared that if I read even, like, a little bit more, then I won't be able to stop. That being said, I have two other options for the rest of the day, for the rest of the night. And I took this off my shelf, which is Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. Because I always say I generally do try not to read the same genre at the same time, especially if it's the same format as well. But there's no way I would ever mix these two books together in my brain, so it does not matter whatsoever. But I don't know. Again, I don't know. Maybe not. But I've been wanting to reread this for ages. And I just wanted to mention it to also just remind myself that I've been wanting to reread it. <laughs> and I think it's going to be an amazing time. I actually let me see on my laptop um, when I read this. Because it was, it feels like honestly an eternity ago. April 2021. Which, God, is good. That was three years ago. Okay, that is concerning. That is horrible. Um, but I remember reading this. I finished it. I listened to it on audio, which I always say I love audiobooks, but it does not always stick in my brain as well as reading something physically. And this is a great example of that. I literally read this thinking this is the best romance I've ever read in my life. <laughs> And I remember nothing. I remember nothing besides, like, some feelings and some vague scenes. I need to experience it again because, like, I loved And it's floppy. And so, obviously, I have not read it in a physical copy. And so, I'm like, you know, and is today the time to do that? I don't, I don't know because the thing is, this book is perfection. And it's making my heart feel a lot of things <laughs> in the best ways. But at the same time, I was like, shit, like... I can't handle all this today. And I think Make It Sweet was actually also quite an emotional book, but not in the same way. There's no way I can describe it, but I think this, especially at the beginning, is just like super fun. But again, I don't remember this at all. That is that. And to top it all off, I have one more option. Only for the Week by Natasha Bishop. And this I got on audio. And it would be, I think, like two-ish hours for me to listen to on my speed. And again, I'm not planning to finish anything tonight. I, again, the last thing I wanted was to stress out about anything. If I literally read nothing for the rest of the night, I do not want to feel bad about it. Um, but <laughs> I have been wanting to read this for ages. I've heard it recommended by people I really trust. And I'm just like really excited about it. It's supposed to be just like a wonderful steamy vacation fake dating romance maybe so i think what i need to do is shut the fuck up now and talk to you um i think i'll probably just talk to you one more time when the night is over and um tell you what i ended up doing it's actually been really nice <laughs> and i told myself i would like ramble more and share more of my feelings and especially in a video that's supposed to be a little bit shorter which hopefully it's actually gonna be a little bit short <laughs> um but my mental health has not been amazing recently 
it's not been terrible but it's not been amazing and um uh, part of it is definitely like seasonal depression amongst other things and the you know i thought it would be till like february or something and it's may now it's may 2nd <laughs> and the weather is still trash only like this week has been a little bit warmer but it's still pretty cold it's still gloomy again there was literally like 30 minutes of sunshine like maybe an hour of sunshine today and that's it, you know? And I'm like, I don't feel like I can complain about it that much because, like, I chose to live here. But I don't know. Like, every year, I mean, it changes a lot. It's very unpredictable. There are sunny times. But, like, it's, you know, you can wake up in the morning and it's so sunny and you're like, oh my gosh, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to go out later. And later comes and it's gloomy again, you know? And it is really hard, like... I feel a little bit better because I've heard a lot of people talk about it, which is why I wanted to mention it and just say, like, you're not alone, you know, obviously. And um, it is obviously, you know, like the seasonal, I, I don't know if seasonal depression and the seasonal affective disorder are the same thing. Either way, <laughs> like, you know, it does affect a lot of people. And especially when the seasons stretch out like this, it makes it even worse and I've just been like oh my gosh like I love spring and it hasn't even felt like spring and it even though it sounds like such a stupid silly little thing it is not really a stupid silly little thing like it can actually physically affect you That's that and I just want to say please be patient with yourself because I have been trying to learn that you know it's okay to have different like phases in life both when it comes to like spanning like across years but also like in like seasons like within a year and stuff and I was like you know animals hibernate in the winter for a reason <laughs> and obviously we don't do that but I'm like maybe it's okay to like not be productive in the same way in the winter time and just like to focus on different parts of life in ways that you can to just try to manage and just try to survive and get by as best as you can but then it's like I have been finally wanting to get out of that and just feel more productive have more energy feel happier and just motivated and encouraged and that has not been the case because the weather is still shit and while it's just the weather like it's not just the weather you know like if you get it you get it and so um that is why I read so much <laughs> like you know I think for a coping mechanism it is one of the best ones that you can have and so that is my main thing and I do actually think that writing helps me even more or like maybe in different ways that I need as well. I will shut up now and I will maybe read this. I will maybe read this or I will listen to only for the week or you know I do think I want to watch a little bit more YouTube and I do want to write. I don't have that much energy left in me so I was gonna you know take the keyboard and everything. I think I'm not gonna do that today and I'll just try to write a little bit. And we'll see how it goes, but again, I will talk to you at least one more time tonight. Hello everyone, so welcome to my tragic, chaotic um, TBR cart. Uh, <laughs> it is the next day, I have to leave to work. But I wasn't an update yesterday, uh, but I got really tired. <laughs> I, again, like, I basically always go to bed at 2 a.m. And I did go to bed at 2 a.m., but I have been somehow waking up earlier recently. And so I get a little bit more tired before I go to bed, shockingly, you know? Um, so, yeah, but <laughs> I actually did a little bit of every single thing that I told you about. So... I have not finished just for the summer. I am so happy about that, actually. Because, <laughs> you know what, I'm certainly not looking forward to going to work today. But, you know what, I am looking forward to having this book to read tonight when I get home. I almost want to take it with me so I can read it on my lunch break, but I've never really done that. I don't know if I would actually read it. But I might just take it with me for emotional support, you know? Um, so again, like, I think this is a masterpiece. I think that this book is 
beautiful and emotional and sweet and charming and they are soulmates okay i know like i feel it in my bones and <laughs> the bond between justin and emma is just so special and i love um again like their emotional journeys as well because they've been through a lot and um it feels just so raw and honest and it is just absolutely incredible and I know a lot of people have been reading this, but in case you weren't sure if you should read it, this is your sign to do so. So then I did actually pick up Make It Sweet, but as I mentioned, I was just so tired. I was like, shit, like, I really want to read this and I'm happy that I know that I it's time for me to reread this after I finish just for the summer. Um, and it actually reminded me a little bit of like what I love about this book, so I just want to quickly mention that. Again, I do not remember the details. But I'm even more excited to reread this now because it literally feels like I'm reading it for the first time. And that is the good good thing about not having the best memory, okay? So Emma is an actress and Lucian is a hockey player and they're now basically entering this stage where I don't want to say they're retiring but Lucian um, has to retire because of an injury and Emma was just like kind of killed off in the show that she's in. And so they're both incredibly lost, kind of like grieving in different ways, just not thriving, you know? They're not doing so good. And they go to this like small town and I don't remember how they meet there exactly, but obviously um, things go on from there. And obviously they have a really special connection because they're at like a similar stage in life. They both feel lost and they connect, you know, uh, over that. I am so excited for this. <laughs> And there's a line that I just want to quickly read at the end that I think that is why I love this book so much, which is, in trying to stay apart, they only grow closer and their broken pieces just might fit together and make them whole. And I love stories like this. I like my favorite kind of romance books is the ones that focus on healing, like in any kind of way. I love that. I think that then the bond that um, is between the characters is just so powerful and so beautiful. And so I was so excited to dive into this and I also started just for the week and I again just like I listened to I think to about 12% um, and again I, I then was just like you know what I should stop reading now and just like go watch TikTok or whatever <laughs> but I am also very happy uh, that I started this and I will definitely be reading it in the next few days. Um, again, this is a vacation romance, and we basically have a setup where the heroine, her ex, got engaged to her... Is it her sister or her best friend? Her, I think it's her sister. Yeah. I need to double check on that, but, you know, I can't look because, again, I'm filming on my phone, but whatever. You know, not a, an amazing situation, but she's not actually really that heartbroken about it because she was not that invested in the relationship, and she um has a crush on the best man because did i not just say yeah i did not say that um there's they're going to their wedding and she has a crush on the best man and the best man has had a crush on her but he was just like you know i can't like have anything to do with my friend's um ex-girlfriend but then he finds out about like who he is marrying and how that happened and he's like oh fuck that you know and <laughs> he is definitely like pining over her and thirsting very hard and you know we love to see that and so the two of them definitely have a strong attraction to each other and I definitely already feel the chemistry and I'm so excited. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a super fun, steamy vacation book. And I would love to read this, you know, under the sun on vacation, but that is just not happening anytime soon. So you know what? I think I'm gonna like it enough to reread it when I'm on vacation one day. <laughs> so yeah, so that will conclude this little day in the life. Uh, yes, I am updating the next day, but you know, who cares? So actually really enjoyed making this so please let me know if you would like to see more vlogs like this again i just need to chill the fuck out sometimes you know um so we're gonna try to work on that and so i have to go to work but if you made it this far in the video leave any kind of sun emoji down below and thank you so much for watching have a great day and i'll see you soon in another video bye